The south of Colombia is divided between the vast Amazonian forest and the parallel ranges of mountains. Heading south, as we leave the high plateaus of the eastern Cordillera, the altitude drops sharply. The road is mainly used to transport to Bogotá goods that have been brought from the Atlantic Ocean up the river Magdalena, the main Colombian waterway. Transport used to be by rail. At the daily market, local products attract consumers, particularly the tropical fruits. One of these has very interesting properties. It's a mangustan. It's aphrodisiac. The skin is good for preventing diabetes. It reduces the sugar in the blood. The landscape gradually rises again. We reach the central cordillera in the region where the river Magdalena has its source. It's still fairly small here. They say it's the size of a torrent that you can jump across. But the leap into the void at the river Bordones is rather more frightening. Sugarcane, grown here since the 16th century, is one of the oldest crops in the country. Between sugarcane harvests, in the area of San Agustin, life slips gently by. This small town of 30,000 inhabitants was founded very late by the Spanish, at the end of the 18th century. But the place had already been inhabited, as can be seen in an exceptional archaeological discovery, a group of mysterious sculptures. The statues, carved out of monoliths, tell us little of their history. We know practically nothing of the civilization that produced them. The statue behind us here represents the birth of a child. At the top you can see the phases of reproduction symbolized by nine moons. The statues of San Agustin represent important personalities in the society, such as shamans. It is estimated that the statues were created between the 2nd century BC and the 10th century AD. Tombs and divinities inhabit a site that remains a mystery.